Welcome to the introduction of ArcGIS Experience Builder. I'm Jian Xiaosong, Product Manager. With me is Kane Harper Wilker, Solution Engineer for National Government. Where we'd like to start is the user apps, then take an overview of the product, go through building blocks, finish with the roadmap and FAQ. On the product page is a gallery of applications built with Experience Builder. I want to show you a few of them. Greenville County COVID-19 Data Hub uses indicators to show how many people have got their first dose and the second dose of Pfizer vaccine. Clicking the card provides more information. The second page uses charts to visualize the same data. Beirut recovery map is one of my favorites. It uses bookmarks to navigate city and the videos on the bookmark to show what happened. It also integrates 2D and 3D. Filtering buildings Listing, zones, and parcels. You can also use Street Image Viewer to explore more. This app has nothing to do with maps or layers. It is a website built with Experience Builder to host a virtual conference so attendees can browse and attend sessions, ask questions through live Q&A. So with Experience Builder, you can create web apps and web pages without coding. As it is built on full version of ArcGIS API for JavaScript, you can also extend and customize widgets and templates to fit your need. Key features of Experience Builder. The first is flexibility. You have control over the layout and the widgets to design your workflow. Second is 2D and 3D integration. It is not only about displaying 2D and 3D maps in one application, but also widgets like filter and the list work with scene layers in the same way as they do with feature layers. Mobile optimization. You can configure apps displaying on mobile differently from those on desktop with one URL. Next is a rich set of widgets and templates are ready for you to use. If none of them meet your needs, build your own to plug in. You may ask what kind of apps you can build. In addition to classic full screen apps, you can build web pages, 3D, gallery, portal, dashboard, survey, and mobile. Essentially, Experience Builder is a canvas for creativity. The flexibility, mobile optimization, integration, and extensibility are keys that set it apart from alternatives. Experience Builder has three editions. It is available in ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise 10.8.1 and up. As developers, you can download the developer's edition from developer's website for customization. As part of the Essential Apps Bundle, you must have a creator or GIS professional user type to create apps. For developers who don't have ArcGIS organizational accounts, use developer subscriptions to access developer edition. Let's take a quick tour with Kayan. 
We'll start creating our first experience by using a template. In this case, we'll choose the Launchpad template, which should be familiar to many of you web app builder users. First, we'll go ahead and name our application Glacier National Park app. And then adjust our screen so that the application fits within the builder. Next, we'll go ahead and configure the title. And since Experience Builder is flexible and offers adaptive layouts, we can actually adjust the size and position of the title depending on where we'd like to have it fit within our application. In this case, we'll go ahead and have the title take up the entire width of the application and then resize it a bit to be slightly taller. Next, we'll go ahead and add in two data sources, a web map and web scene of Glacier National Park. Now, since Experience Builder can work with both 2D and 3D data simultaneously, we'll connect both the scene and map to our existing map widget, enabling us to easily swap between the two once we move into the application. Additionally, since Experience Builder is mobile friendly and adaptive, we can even configure a mobile specific experience for smaller devices by customizing the layout slightly or even modifying where we're placing widgets. Now, finally, Experience Builder supports multi-page applications, so we can add in a second page and even add in an additional widget, such as a menu widget, to easily navigate between those pages. We'll go ahead and save and preview our application. And when it loads, you'll notice that we're easily able to navigate around both our 3D scene, swap to our 2D map and back, move to our second page that we added, as well as go over and view a mobile specific view for that device. Thank Canyon for a sneak peek of Experience Builder. You can configure in Experience by assembling these blocks together. Template, widget, theme, data source, and the framework library for extensibility. We are going to focus on the first four blocks in this presentation. Please check out the customizing and extending session for extensibility. Configuring in Experience starts with a template. There are two types of templates. The full screen is for web apps and a scrolling page for web pages. There are many default templates provided by the software. You may preview and choose one to start with. You can also start with other templates available in ArcGIS Online leaving Atlas, my organization, etc. There are two types of widgets. One is basic, the other is layout. The latter controls the arrangement of the former. The basic widgets carry on functions like map, list, and survey. Four new widgets are added recently, chart, query, coordinate conversion, branch version management. Generally, a widget has three properties, content, style, and action. With the content property, you connect widget to the data and choose options like search on the map. The style property allows you to adjust the width and height of the widget as well as where you'd like it to be on the page. You can also fine tune its appearance with background, border, and the box shadow. Animation are visual effects that occur when a widget appears or is in the transition. For example, this 2D and 3D face-off in effect takes place when a view with 2D map moves to the view with 3D scene. The action property enables widgets to talk to each other. 
the message action is in action in response to triggers. For example, when the map one zooms to the area, the map two will zoom to the same area. The data action is in action directly taken by the widget to deal with a set of features like export to CSV or view the layer in the table. As the data action is straightforward, we are going to focus on the message action. Experience Builder is data-driven, so data are shared at the app level referred as framework or data in the table here. A message action involves three parts, triggers, targets, and action. The trigger is a message from a source widget like extent changes from map one. The target is the responder to the trigger, which could be a widget or data. The action is what the target does. In the table, the message extent changes is triggered by map one. If map two is the target, the action could be zoomed to the same area as map one. If data is the target, the action could be filter data records, which may result in the list widget only displaying features within the current map extent as it connects to the same data, automatically making the change. Let's see the demo to get a better idea. For our next experience, we'll start with a blank template. And in this experience, we're going to focus on having widgets communicate each other, communicate with each other, and customizing them with our data sources. So we'll start by going ahead and connecting to our data sources again. In this case, we'll start with the same web map and web scene that we had in our previous demo. Then we'll add in a map widget and customize its location and place on the page to better fit our application. We'll then go ahead and connect that map to both our web scene and web map. Then we'll go ahead and add in a additional widget. In this case, we'll go ahead and include the widget controller, which enables us to include multiple widgets in an easy to use compact location. And here we'll go ahead and actually add in a new widget, which is called the table widget. With our table widget, we'll go ahead and add in a new sheet and configure it to our places of interest location in Glacier National Park. Now with those first two widgets configured, we'll go ahead and add in our third widget, which will be a list widget. We'll adjust the list widget to fit our page. And the great thing about list widgets is they come already configured with a bunch of templates that can really jumpstart your creation of them. We'll go ahead and tell it to take up the entire height of the page and then connect it to that same underlying National Glacier National Parks location data source. Now, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and create some dynamic text based off attributes within our data. Here, we'll take the location name and resize the box a bit. And we'll also connect it to a dynamic image, which is an attribute in our feature service. In this case, we'll use the photo attribute to go ahead and have it dynamically populate the location. Now we'll also use the content style and action panes to add a bit more configuration to the widget. Here for states, we'll go ahead and customize the color of the border that'll be around the widget and increase its boldness when it's selected. We'll also go ahead and add in a tool, in this case, a sort tool, and we'll let people sort off of whether there's a photo or not. And we'll go ahead and just label that photo. Additionally, we could use the style, the style pane to ensure that it's fit, it fits and feels right within our application using some very easy to use tools um, to configure the location of the widget within the application. 
Now, finally, once that's set, we're going to go ahead and configure some actions using the action pane. So we'll begin by targeting two separate types of sources. Within Experience Builder, you can either target widgets on an individual basis or target the framework, meaning the underlying data source within the entire application. We'll start by targeting the map and having the list widget pan and flash to the Glacier National Park's points of interest whenever one's selected on the map. Additionally, we'll also target the entire Glacier National Park data source across all three of our widgets, the table, map, and list widget, and filter the data records based off the selected feature, meaning the expected behavior we should see when a, when a filter or when a feature is selected is that the list will filter, the map will filter, and the table widget will filter because we're targeting the underlying data source and not just an individual record or widget. So once that's done, we'll actually go ahead and save our application. And before previewing it, we'll adjust the theme to something a bit darker just to kind of fit with the feel of our application. Now, when we preview our application, we can see that when we select Lake McDonald Lodge, it'll go ahead and filter its location on the list, on the map. And if we open our table up, we'll notice it's also the only selected feature within our table. Additionally, if we unselect it and select the headquarters building, you'll notice our map pans and flashes to the location of the headquarters building on the map because we're targeting, we targeted that specific widget. Beyond that, each individual attribute has both its text and feature dynamically populated. And every time we'll click on it, the map widget will be targeted for those two specific actions. And the underlying data framework will be targeted filtering all three widgets in our experience. That's great. The layout widgets are containers to organize basic widgets. So you can mix them in your design. I'd like to highlight the section widget. It is a container with multiple views, a great way to organize your content. Tang will demonstrate it shortly. For details on other layout widgets, please check out the designing apps with style and layout session. Let's take a close look at section. Now we're going to focus on how you can set up the same pages to easily navigate between different views and widgets. In this case, we're going to continue to work with the same application that we're using in our previous example and add some additional functionality to it. We'll start by adjusting the layout of our existing widgets, both the map and list widget in this case. Now, here, we're going to go ahead and add in a new type of widget, which is a section widget. And we'll go ahead and add in our map to the section widget and use a table of contents to go ahead and connect the section widget, resize it a bit, and add both of our widgets inside of it. Then we'll just quickly go ahead and continue to use the flexibility of Experience Builder to customize it a bit further, re-expand our map, and move our table over a bit more, and adjust them slightly. So now that we have one section, we're gonna go ahead and add in an additional view. Views are a great way to add in different widgets and applications all within the same page without kind of overwhelming the user all at once by displaying them all within the same interface. Within a section, you can have multiple views. And in this case, we'll add in a view one that we'll go ahead and call explore. And you know, view one will really be focused on what we did create in our NOS application where you can explore different locations across Glacier National Park. Now view two, will be called feedback. And in view two, we're gonna focus on 
using some new functionality in Experience Builder uh, focused on integration with between Survey123 and the map widget to allow users to give feedback to different locations they've explored across Glacier National Park. So within this section, we're going to go ahead and add in a survey widget and size it to fit. We'll select an existing survey and then customize its look and feel to match the rest of our application. And then we'll also add in a map. Resize it and connect it to our Glacier National Parks map. Now in this case, since we have that existing survey, we're going to go ahead and connect the survey to the map. And we'll choose the map widget we just added and our National Parks place of interest. And we'll just quickly match the fields in the feature service to the survey questions so that we can auto-populate them when we select a feature. And this even includes the geometry, so we'll match the point location to the location on the map and save our application. Now, finally, to enable us to easily navigate back and forth between the two views, we'll include a view navigation widget and we'll use our tools to snap it to the horizontal center of our application. Uh, and we'll customize its look a bit more just to add a little more detail and context to it. Now, finally, we'll go ahead and go back to the outline, select our section, and we'll use the style pane to add in a transition animation. In this case, we'll use the cube animation, although there's a, a bunch of other ones we can use, and we can even change the direction in which they rotate. All right, so we'll save our application and go ahead and preview it. Now, when our application loads, we have this great place where we can come and explore locations across Glacier National Park, just as we did in the previous demonstration. Then, once we've explored places and we want to give feedback on them, we can go and select a specific location. So, for example, we'll select this shuttle stop along uh, Lake McDonald, and you'll notice it auto-populates the information in the survey since we've connected the two, add some feedback, it even maps the location on the map and submit the survey. And we can do this all because we're just using these dynamic sections to navigate back and forth in our experience. Data source. Experience Builder provides unified data management. So data is available to all widgets. Moreover, you can see connections between layers, widgets, and the fields as shown in the diagram. Further, you can also set auto-refresh intervals to pick up changes in the data. Data source like feature layer may have four types of views. Three of them are built in. That means they cannot be created. The fourth is data view. Understanding them will help you choose the right data to connect with. The default view includes all the features. The selected feature view contains selected features from the end users. The auto-populate view only applies to the list widget with one feature. Data view, however, is not a built-in but a subset of data source that you can create through filtering, sorting, and limiting the data. You may use data view to pre-process data so you can control which and how features appear in the widget. Here comes the demo of data view. In this demo, we're going to focus on creating dynamic data views in Experience Builder. Data views enable you to create custom perspectives of your data based off sorting, filtering, or other options. In this application, we've already set up our widgets, and we're going to want to configure a couple of data views to ensure that this application is always appealing and usable to our end users immediately upon being opened. To start, we'll go into our data sources and create our first view for our places of interest layer. In this case, We'll go ahead and sort based off of the URL field, which contains a link to a live webcam that we can use in our embed widget. 
Then we'll select view for empty selection and go ahead and sort off the photo field. Now, this also ensures that our dynamic image is populated immediately upon the application being open, ensuring that there's always something to catch our users at eye when they come in. Now we'll go ahead and connect our list to our national parks data and to our data view one that we've configured. Then we'll go ahead and connect our embed widget to our to our national parks location and to the attribute URL. Noting that the webcam will automatically come up since we've connected it to a specific data view. We'll go ahead and save and preview our application. And now when it loads, we're immediately greeted with a UR a webcam for Lake McDonald. And if we click on each one, we'll go ahead and see the corresponding webcam and image for that given application for that given location, ensuring that even when the application opens and every time it's selected, we're creating an engaging experience for our users. Another important aspect of data source is dynamic content. You can dynamically display attribute values statistics or expressions from a feature layer using text, button, image, etc. An example is that you have a feature layer that contains URLs to websites, and you want to use a button as a link to open the website associated with a selected feature. The diagram illustrates the steps to create a dynamic link button or link text. You can also display feature count or other statistics for a numeric field. The expression editor allows you to combine text, numbers, field variables, and statistics together. Here is the demo to configure dynamic link button and text. For this demo, we're going to focus on how to create dynamic content based off your data. If you remember in the previous demonstration on data views, we were able to dynamically link to different embedded webcams and images using our attribute in the places of interest feature class that we have. Now this time, we're going to link out to web pages that contain additional information on these places of interest, as well as enable you to view it live on a webcam in a new tab based off a selected feature. Here, we've already configured a list with our place of interest, and now we'll add a button to link to our website of interest. We'll configure the button a bit to match the rest of our application and connect it to data. In this case, we'll connect it to our Glacier National Park's point of interest, and we'll set the link to be a web address based off of an attribute, which is going to be our website URL. And we'll go ahead and change the text to learn more so it's informative about what you're going to do when you click on the button. Next, we'll go ahead and use a text widget and add that in to essentially enable users to click on the text to link out to a live webcam showing that location um, on a new tab. Here, we'll add the text, view it live. And we'll go ahead and resize the text to be a bit larger and also a bit darker and blue to match the rest of our application. Finally, we'll go ahead and add in a link. And since when we have the data, we'll then link to a new web address. In this case, we'll use the attribute URL and go ahead and link to our webcam. We'll save our application. And now when we preview our application and we select a location, for example, Lake McDonald Lodge, and we click Learn More, it'll link us out to a web page with additional information, as well as give us a webcam from that area. And the same thing will happen when we click the Headquarters building. 
will view the visitor center and the webcam associated with that location. And the same would go if we clicked on any other location within our feature service, that it would link to the corresponding website and webcam to that location. Themes. Theme is to define the look and feel of the app. You have options to choose color and font. Other building blocks. A window is for splash screens, information, confirmation, or alerts. You can use the window to display a splash screen in a fixed position or show an alert message nearby a button when clicked. Page is the backbone of Experience Builder. You can turn on the header and the footer of the page and open it with a window. The outline becomes handy when widgets are nested on the page. It helps you navigate the widgets and select right one to edit. You can also add a new page by choosing a default template. String group is a layout with multiple screens to organize widgets on a scrolling page providing engaging modern web experiences. This is an example. Scrolling the page, here is the first screen, second screen, the third screen, a screen with map. You may notice each screen may have two parts. One is the main stage in the back and scrolling panel in the front. Keep in mind you can add any widgets on a screen. Let's see the demonstration. For this next demonstration, we're going to use a scrolling application instead of a full screen one. Applications in Experience Builder can be both scrolling and full screen depending on what template you use on each page. Here, we're going to focus on a new feature, screen groups, which is a powerful way to jumpstart your scrolling application and add some immediate configuration to it. Here, we'll select the flyer screen group that we're interested in to auto-populate the application with its layout and then begin connecting it to our data and adding some additional configurations to it. We'll start with connecting to our web map. And you'll notice we'll we already have this auto scrolling widget over on the right that we can use that's configured with bookmarks. Here, we'll go ahead and add in a bookmark of our web map around the southern portion of Glacier National Park, specifically the Apgar area near Lake McDonald. We'll go ahead and save it. And you'll notice that since we have the snapshot selected, it auto populates an image on the map up at top to add some additional context. And we'll call this Apgar. We could also add in some additional descriptions below in case we wanted to you know, inform individuals about what that given place is when they're scrolling through our application. And the same thing works as we can continue to add in additional bookmarks. In this case, if we wanted to focus on the western or the eastern portion rather of Lake McDonald, where there's some additional tourist attractions, we could save that. And again, it'll auto capture that image to add context. And we'll add in the text to inform individuals of what that location is. Now, finally, we'll go ahead and connect to our scene, preview the application, save the application. And before we preview it, we could also go ahead and add in additional widgets or screen groups beneath, such as a showcase screen group, if we wanted to highlight various additional configurations, mostly focused on multimedia and text. Now, when we preview our application, We'll immediately have the bookmarks, and as we scroll through them, we'll be taken through a guided tour or a fly through of the different locations of interest in Lake McDonald that we've highlighted using our bookmarks within the screen group widget. Next came 
We know it is important to run apps on mobile, so we want to emphasize the capability of optimizing apps on mobile. For example, on mobile, you want to turn off the search tool on the map, but keep it on desktop, or simply use less widgets. To do so, the key is to move widgets to the pending list other than delete them, so they are available on desktop. Here comes the demo. In our last demo, we'll walk through how to deliver mobile-friendly dashboards using Experience Builder in what we'll call two dashboards, one intelligent URL. We'll start with a blank full screen application and add in an embed widget. And we'll have the embed widget take up the entire screen size. Then we'll grab the URL of our full screen dashboard and enter it as the URL for our embed widget. Then we'll go to our mobile device configuration. Here, you'll notice our embed widget is already in the pending list, meaning it's part of our greater experience, but won't display on a smaller screen device. Now we'll add in another embed widget for our mobile experience and set that to take up the full screen. Now we'll get the URL of our mobile dashboard and add it as the URL for our mobile embedded experience. Finally, we'll go ahead and add in a window or a splash screen now, windows are a great way to add some information to users or talk about compliance or understanding how to use an application when someone first enters it. And the great thing about them is that they're responsive on both full screen and mobile applications. We'll go ahead and save and then preview our application. And you'll notice that when it loads, we're already gone ahead and we're greeted with our window. And if we move into a mobile experience. We have that same window there. We can agree to the terms and conditions. And you'll notice that we're within the same URL, but able to move between the mobile dashboard and the full screen one because Experience Builder is auto detecting screen, the screen size and adjusting the layout to serve us the correct size dashboard. Thank you. Publishing is the process that moves apps from draft to published status. Once you publish the app, you can edit and test the updates without affecting the live app. When the app has the subscriber content from Living Atlas, you will be prompted to authorize access from your account, so end users are not asked to sign in. You may generate a template as your own starters for reuse or consistent branding. Roadmap This is the priority list for 2021 and beyond, including core widgets like print, add data, search, and edit. Service Explorer and Water Outage Isolation Trace Widgets are for Utility Network. In addition, we plan to support for accessibility and listing custom widgets in Marketplace. Keep in mind, things are subject to change. Many of you have asked the following questions. Will Experience Builder replace Web App Builder? For the online edition, there is no plan to replace an obsolete Web App Builder. Both builders will be running and maintained in parallel. Web App Builder will continue to be available. The Enterprise Edition follows ArcGIS Enterprise product lifecycle. The Developer Edition follows ArcGIS API for JavaScript 3 version product lifecycle. Can anything be transferred between Web App Builder and Experience Builder? The answer is no. 
you need to reconfigure apps or rewrite custom widgets from Web App Builder to Experience Builder. Will Experience Builder reach functional parity of Web App Builder? Yes, starting with the core and the popular widgets, we plan to move most of widgets from Web App Builder to Experience Builder through incremental releases. Please visit Experience Builder help documentation and the user community. Also check out these templates under ArcGIS Online. They are created by the development team, showcasing new capabilities in each release. Kane and I will appreciate your feedback, and thank you for watching this presentation. Hi everyone, thanks for watching our presentation on ArcGIS Experience Builder getting started. We're really excited to have you all here. Um, I'm Kenyon Wilker, I'm a solution engineer on the national government team and joining me is Jinsha Song, the product manager for ArcGIS Experience Builder. Uh, you guys have a lot of great questions in the chat and we're excited to get through them. Uh, just a reminder, if we don't get to your question today, please come and see us in the ArcGIS online um, Ask the Ex Experts booth. Um, we will be there for the rest of the week answering your questions um, if, if we're not able to answer them today or if you, you have any follow-up ones. So with that, Jinsha, I will go ahead and, and throw the first question to you. Um, this one was upvoted 37 times, seems to be a very popular question. Will Experience Builder have all the widgets that Web App Builder currently has? And maybe just talk a little bit about the roadmap and the, the plan that moving forward. Great. So uh, I know you all of you use Web App Builder very well. So you know, um, we have the, this kind of next generation of Experience Builder to enable you to do more and do better. But the challenging is our widgets is not there yet. We do have a plan to move most of Web App Builder widgets over to Experience Builder. It takes time, takes uh, releases. So we will be there. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Next, next question. Um, and I think this is good when we can maybe elaborate on this a little bit more, kind of the, the integration between Experience Builder and the Map Viewer Beta. Um, the question specifically is, can Experience Builder handle layer groups coming from the new Map Viewer? Um, and maybe we'll just ex expand that to, can Experience Builder handle, handle functionality from the, the new Map Viewer Beta? Yes, so basically, uh, fundamentally, the new Map Viewer is built on JavaScript API 4X. Experience Builder does the same thing. We all built on 4X API. So we handle the functionalities seamlessly. If you have the group layer in the Map Viewer, new Map Viewer, they will be bring over to the Map widget and Map Layers widget in Experience Builder. The same, the great uh, pop-up style will be put over to Experience Builder as well. And then in the future, the charts, right? Online now supports charts capability. In Experience Builder, we are going to support charting in April update. Um, following the update, we are going to see how we can uh, read charts from online into Experience Builder in a way similar when you read bookmarks from online map viewer to Experience Builder. That's great. Um, the, the next one kind of pertains to the, the, the coming update for Experience Builder and the coming ArcGIS Online update. Um, are the query and chart widgets being released in the next ArcGIS Online update? And then the user also wants to know when they'll be added to the enterprise version of Experience Builder. Great question. Uh, yes, we are very excited to introduce query and the chart widgets in the April release, around April 13. So that's the plan release date. Um, these two widgets give you a lot of great capabilities uh, to interact with each other. Um, the chart only support bar or column type, but we will support more chart type in the coming releases. Okay, um, next question. Uh, kind of talking about some of the um, 
the configuration widgets. Um, what's the difference between a view and a page? I know it's a pretty common question. Um, and then the, the, I guess they're kind of curious in terms of how content gets loaded between a view versus a page. Um, could you, you know, elaborate that uh, a little bit? Yes, Mark. So, uh, so people who ever ask these questions, really good, really great. Now, uh, no experience builder, right? The page we loading things asynchronously. So you when you click click the page, then you get things loaded. The view is uh, we try to make preloaded everything preloaded in the views, then then show. Uh, but sometimes they will introduce some performance because you have 10, 16 views, have all the maps in the view that will cause the performance issue. So we are trying to now to optimize what kind of widgets content we will go preload it first and then some of them will not. So it depends on the content. Um, Another difference between view and the page, think about that view is really a fixed panel. You cannot scroll in the view, right? But page, you can have a fixed screen page or you can have a scrolling page. Uh, that's the difference as well. Great. Uh, the next question uh, talks about Survey123 and some of the integration with the Survey123 widget. Um, can Survey123 can uh, be a complex survey, or so can the, the Survey123 widget experience builder, can it use a complex survey built with Survey123 Connect, or does it have to be built with the web builder for Survey123? Um, um, that's, that's a great question. So um, Survey123 can be uh, all three in two ways, one through Connect, another through uh, Survey123 website, is that right? So you can, uh, you can author in them as long as those survey can be uploaded to the survey one, two, three website that we can consume in from there. The, That's the, the pre requirement. Yeah. The, the one thing I would add to that is just like with the, the survey one, two, three website, the edit functionality and experience builder wouldn't work with the survey one, two, three connect, right? You could view it, but you couldn't edit in within experience builder. Um, so the, the next question, uh, another great one about, you know, Experience Builder and some of the integration with other applications um, for, the, for the roadmap. Will dashboard capabilities such as charts, I know we just talked about that, as well as templates and, and other functionality be integrated? Um, and then what's kind of the, the road ahead going forward with Experience Builder and, and um, you know, some like the, the dashboard templates? Oh, that's great. So basically, uh, as you know, um, um, we talk about that, we are going to have a chart widget in April, along with chart widget comes from comes with um, dashboard style templates. So we will have a few templates called monitor, reveal. So basically have a fixed screen uh, dashboard style, also have page style uh, monitor a dashboard. So you can just go there and check it out in April 13th and uh, they are part of default templates. Uh, we will have some, uh, that team will build one or two um, example templates under ArcGIS Online, so you can see the new capabilities there as well. The, the one other thing I'll add to that is just to, for, for clarification, right? Experience Builder and Dashboards are two separate products, but Experience Builder has dashboard templates, right? So you can kind of mix and match and choose the, the best of both worlds when you're building your solutions. Um, the next one about um, you know accessibility and, and 508 compliance. Does Experience Builder have any features to help with Section you know 508 compliance or uh, accessibility uh, standards? Yeah, so that's a great question because we have to comply, right? So this is the feature we are currently working on. Um, we don't know the timeline yet. I hope we will support accessibility in Q1. 2022, basically next year, Q1. That's the timeline. Um, I hope we can get there. Great. But we know it's, it is very important. Absolutely. absolutely. The next question, um, can I modify an app built with ArcGIS Experience Builder with custom HTML, JavaScript, and CSS? Maybe this is a good time to talk about the different versions of Experience Builder, um, including the developer one that are, that are out there. So, um, I'm not really sure about this one. Um, can you repeat again? Sure. So I think 
you know, maybe we can talk to the both the out of the box one that you find in Enterprise and ArcGIS Online and the developer one. Um, but the, they want to know if they can modify an app um, with custom HTML, JavaScript, or CSS. Okay, uh, that's great. Yeah, so for online and uh, ArcGIS Enterprise, everything's out of box, right? So basically, you cannot do that. We don't have a download button so that you can download the app from online or enterprise and then host it locally by yourself, um, then modify from there. Um, so we don't have this pattern. We do have this pattern with web app builder. Um, so for experience builder currently, what you can do is using developer edition and create an app and download, then host it by yourself. Then from there, you can do any customization, uh, including HTML or CSS. Uh, the only thing you can do the customization with hosted um, ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise version is through embed widget. Embed, you can do so, but has limited functionality. We do support JavaScript in the embed widget, but you cannot access uh, Experience Builder DOM. That's really technical part. Basically, you cannot modify anything inside Experience Builder. Uh, so that's the limitation. If you're really looking for uh, modification, customization, developer edition is the best way for you to do so. Great, thanks for, thanks for clarifying that. The next question, I'm talking about different data types that Experience Builder supports. Is there support for standalone tables, um, relationships, so you know, joins or relates that table? Uh, and then they're also curious if the Experience Builder supports non-hosted services, such as a service published from an enterprise geodatabase. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, when you're talking about standalone table, you basically say Excel table or those, you know, nothing associated with the feature layer. No, we don't support that part yet. You have to be part of a, a feature table, we call it. Feature table is a, a part of the feature uh, map services there. Um, yeah. Um, the related table, yes, we we do plan to support related table in the future. Now the table widget don't do that. Okay. And does the, you mentioned feature layer, so does the feature layer need to be hosted in order to, to use it or can it be a, a reference feature layer? It, it can be a reference feature okay. layer, yeah. Great. Uh, next question, this is an easy one. I'll, uh, I'll take this one. How do we get to experience builder? Um, so a couple of different ways. If you have the, the, the ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise version, you can just go to your app launcher chiclet um, when you're logged into your, your ArcGIS organization um, and you know, you'll go up to a experience builder. Um, you'll see the icon up there, click on it, you'll go to the landing page. Um, for the developer edition, once you've registered it with your ArcGIS Enterprise, ArcGIS Online, you'll just need to go to that, that application endpoint. Um, and the, the team's put together really great documentation on, on how to do that. So I'd advise you to, to check that out on their page. Um, the next question, talking again about um, Survey123, will an action be added for the Survey123 widget to enable editing of, of an existing Survey123 record? Um, so for example, selecting a feature on the map or the list and then being able to edit that feature in Survey123 in the widget. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, right now we don't have this action, um, either message action or data action there. Um, yeah, so we do have a plan to support um, server one to three uh, editing capabilities in the UC timeline. Um, that means you can do, right now, you only can add record, add a survey, right, to the survey widget, or you're passing the data from the feature from the map to the survey. You cannot really do any editing on the survey uh, record. Um, in the UC timeline, we plan to do so. Great. Um, next one, again, talking about integration with other applications. I'll, I'll start and then Jinshaw, feel free to, to add on. Um, can Experience Builder be used with Hub? So the answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> and there's a, a couple different ways, right? So they're both, you know, web applications that are deployed as part of your ArcGIS organization, whether it's you know, ArcGIS Hub with ArcGIS Online um, or ArcGIS Sites with, with ArcGIS Enterprise. Um, and we've seen a lot of common patterns with people using the application widget or the embed widget with ArcGIS Hub and ArcGIS Sites to embed experiences within Hub that you, know, you can then go discover 
within a hub site, right? More tailored, you know, information about a given topic. Um, experience Builder also offers an embed widget. So if you wanted to provide maybe an overarching experience and embed a site within it, you could do that as well. So the two are very interoperable and, um, uh, you know, work well together to, to display the type of geospatial and non-geospatial information you're, you're trying to get a, across in a web form. Um, the next question, I, I think this is another really great one, um, talking about some of the mobile configurations for Experience Builder um, and, and, and templates. Um, there's a lot of great um, templates out there, but they're mostly geared towards um, the, the desktop side. Are there going to be any mobile-friendly templates that users can leverage going forward? I love this request. <laughs> no, we don't have yet, but I think it's a great uh, request. I think we will all really think about that. Um, yeah, we, uh, I think we will put this one into our enhancement request for sure. Okay. The next question, I think this is a good one just to, for, to make sure everyone's aware of. So they, uh, we've been talking about the different versions of our JavaScript API. What version is, is Web App Builder built on? And then what version is Experience Builder built on? Great. So Web App Builder is built on JavaScript API 3X and Experience Builder is built on 4X. So that's why you see we cannot really uh, migrate application from one to another easily because they're built on different architecture. Okay. Um, next question is, well, do you plan on publishing, uh, you, you know, you and the Experience Builder team, do you plan on publishing a a roadmap, either near-term, mid-term, or long-term roadmap um, for, for the new coming functionality um, that we'll see in Experience Builder? Great question. <laughs> so I just post a um, roadmap for 2021 and beyond in the uh, GeoNet community. So check out, check that one out. At the same time, I also post uh, April um, release What's the new features in the uh, April release there? So check that out as well. I think this is really good questions. Uh, I plan to um, post the roadmap as many as I can if, if we know for sure we will be there. So uh, I think it's a great question. I will constantly update those those roadmap for the for the near term. It's about three months, right? And the long term is about a year. I will give that roadmap out uh, at community, GeoNet community, yeah. Great, and speaking of the, the April um, update, I think this is a great question to, to tie, tie onto that. How can you download um, the attribute data associated with um, features you're working with at Experience Builder? Can you, you know this answer? Yeah. So using uh, with, within the, the April update, you'll be able to use the, um, the table widget to, to export data, um, the, the feature data that you work with in Experience Builder into a, 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 local, a local file. Yeah, also uh, I'll add to that, you can also export a CSV, JSON, GeoJSON from query, query widget as well, not just table. So uh, you have, we introduced this concept called data action and export to CSV is part of data action. Great. So we have two minutes left. We'll go ahead and, and ask one question. One last question. I think it's a great question for us to end on. Um, and again, come see us in the booth for the rest of the week. Um, how do you get started with Experience Builder? Where's the best place for someone to get started using it who, who's never used it before or has maybe only used Web App Builder? You're, you're the expert, can you? Oh, uh, I think this workshop's a great, a great first step. Uh, my, my next advice would be go you know, talk to us in the, um, the Ask the Experts location, bring your ideas, um, you know, challenge us, talk about what, what, what you wanna do, what some of your goals are. Um, and then you know, just go log into your ArcGIS organization uh, if you're at Enterprise 1081, or if you're you know part of ArcGIS on an ArcGIS Online organization, test out Experience Builder, start building functionality. Um, and I think the easiest way to get started is to follow some of the tutorials or use templates that are already out there, so you can see what other people are building. Yeah, you can access Experience Builder through experience.arcgis.com. Go to experience dot arcgis.com, or go to ArcGIS on online. Go to the app launcher. You will, you will find Experience Builder there. If you are using uh, Enterprise, just go there, uh, App Launcher as well. And for developer edition, go to developersarchist.com for download. Great. Well, we are out of time. Thank you all for coming.
and we hope to see you. There's a lot more questions. We hope to see you in the Arctis Online. Um, ask the experts throughout the week. So thank you all for your time.